In this video, we're going to take a look at using the Rational Roots Theorem for polynomials. This is a really important theorem when you're either factoring polynomials or, say, trying to find their zeros. The reason why this is so important is because it gives us a list of things that we can start trying to see if they are zeros or possibly not zeros. So let's quickly look at this theorem to see what it says. According to the Rational Roots Theorem, if f is a polynomial with integer coefficients and it has rational zeros, then they must be of the form p over q. And wait a minute, what's this p, what's this q? Well, p is a factor of the constant term and q is a factor of the leading coefficient. So essentially, you look at your polynomial and you grab the very last term, that's the constant term, list out all of its factors. You take the very first leading coefficient, you list out all of its factors, and then you create fractions with the two, and this will develop a list of things to try. Don't worry if this seems a little tricky. We're going to go over some examples, and you'll see this in work. All right, so let's see how we can use the rational roots theorem. So what this says is that I want to look at my polynomial and first just check to see if it has integer coefficients. That means every single one of these numbers in front of x's, and even the constant on the end, must all be integers. So no fractions, no decimals, nothing like that. And so, you know, this one looks pretty good. Now, if this does have rational zeros, then they must be of the form p over q. We'll use our 2 on the end to form our factors of p, and we'll use our 6 at the beginning to use our factors of q. So factors of p factors of q. All right, so let's just list out everything that could divide evenly into two. Well, there's not a whole lot. Uh, one could go in there, and also two. So those are the only two things that divide evenly into two. Uh, let's see, when it comes to six, one could go in there, two could go in there, three, and 6. So there's a lot more things that could go into Q. Also you want to consider uh, the positive and the negative values of each of these. I tend not to worry about these until I actually start building my fractions, but it is good to note them now. Alright, now that you've listed out the factors of P and the factors of Q, you want to start listing out your possible rational zeros. That's where you start making fractions out of these things possible rational zeros. All right, so I like to take one of these numbers at a time, create fractions with all the rest, grab the next number, do fractions with all the rest. Let's see what happens. So 1 divided by 1 is 1. 1 divided by 2 is a one-half, one divided by three, one-third, and one divided by six, one-six. So here I have two, four, six, eight possible rational zeros, and I'm going to develop a few more. Now we'll take the two and put it over all of these numbers. So two over one is two, two over two is 1, and we already have that listed, so we won't list it twice. Uh, 2 over 3 is 2 thirds. And 2 over 6 is 1 half. So it looks like I have a list of uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 possible rational zeros uh, that I could then start trying to divide in here to see if any of them really are zeros. Alright, let's go ahead and look at another example, uh, just to make sure you have this process down. Okay, so for this one, we're looking at 8x to the 4th plus 2x cubed plus 5x squared minus 4x minus 3. Remember to develop your factors uh, from your constant term on the end and your factors from the leading coefficient. Factors of p. Factors of q. And you want to list out everything that could divide into these. So for p, plus minus 1, and it looks like plus minus 3, those are the only two things that will divide into 3 evenly. 
Okay, same thing with Q over there. Plus minus uh, 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 4, and plus minus 8. So I think that covers everything that will divide into 8. Now let's create some fractions. So possible rational zeros. All right, starting with a 1. 1 divided by 1, 1. 1 divided by 2, 1 half. 1 divided by 4, 1 fourth. 1 divided by 8, 1 eighth. Perfect. Now we'll do the same thing for the 3, take it over all of these. So 3 over 1 is 3. 3 over 2 3 over 4 and 3 over 8. So this one gives a bunch more uh, possible rational zeros. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 possible uh, rational zeros. Now, remember that you need some more theorems to actually go through and see which ones are zeros or which ones are not zeros. This gives you just a list to start with. Now, you may be wondering, what happens if I have fractions inside my polynomial? You already told me that this thing only works when you have integer coefficients. Well, let's do one more example and I'll show you real quick. So suppose I'm looking at x cubed minus 1 half x squared plus a 1 third x minus 2. Now, the rational roots theorem doesn't really apply to this guy because it has fractions uh, as some of its coefficients. It only works for integer coefficients. Well, to get around something like this, you want to find the lowest common denominator of all of the fractions present. So let's say I got a 2 and a, a, a 3. So I'm going to say that my lowest common denominator is 6. And you want to multiply everything through by that lowest common denominator. So let's see, 6 times x cubed would be x cubed. 6 times 1 half would be 3. Uh, 6 times a 1 third would be a 2. And 6 times a 2, a negative 12. Now this is not the same function as before, since we multiplied by 6. But the good news is, uh, is that all of the zeros, or possible zeros here, will be the same possible zeros in the original. So now we can apply the rational roots theorem to this one and find out what uh, possible rational zeros it might have. So let's do that real quick. Grab our p and our q. Make some factors. Starting with p. Lots of different things that could go into p. So plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 3, plus minus 4, plus minus 6, plus minus 12. Wow, that is quite a bit. All right, let's see the things that go into q. Plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 3, and plus minus 6. All right. Possible factors. We have lots and lots of fractions to make. So we'll take each one of these and put it over each one of these. Plus minus 1, 1 over 1. Plus minus 1 half. Plus minus a third. Plus minus a sixth. Alright, so I've taken the one, put it over all of these four. Now I move on to the two. Two over one plus minus two. Two over two is one, so I already have that. Plus minus two thirds. And two over six is the same as one third. I already have that one as well. Uh, so now I can go on to the three. So three over one. 3 over 2. 3 over 3 is 1. And 3 over 6 is 1 half. Both of those I have. On to the 4. 4 over 2 is 2. Then I have 4 thirds. 
4 over 6 is 2 thirds. I already have it. On to the 6. 6 over 2 is 3. 6 over 3 is 2. And 6 over 6 is 1. I have those ones. On to the 12. 12 over 1. 12 over 2 is 6. I have it. 12 over 3 is 4. I have that one. And 12 over 6 is 2. I have that one. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, uh, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24 possible uh, factors that I could then start testing out. All right, so that's how you use the rational roots theorem for polynomials.